And welcome back, everybody, to Tales of Berseria. This is Berserker Tempest bringing you yet another chapter in this beautiful tragedy, tragic story. Last time, I forget his name, but old bastard got his research what he needed. Now, I have no idea. Just return to the Van Altia. But I might go into that dungeon. Maybe not. But let's definitely find out what happens next. Take a look at the Oh. Yes. Scout ship setting sail. I thought I smelled someone pondering. What's on your mind, Lafayette? I know Siegfried comes from another continent and all. But do you know anything else about it, Rokoro? Nope, can't say I do. All I care about are swords. That contraption doesn't interest me much. I suppose that makes sense. But it looked real powerful. Just guessing based on how we saw Zavid use it, I'd say it amplifies his power somehow. An amplifier? It's true that he seemed to get stronger when he fired it at himself. Yeah, and it gave that dying legendary wyvern enough strength to escape. But wasn't it also what he used to dispel Melchior's illusions back there? That was also amplification. The Malachim are the source of his arts. The relic pushed them past their limits and... kablooey. Suffice it to say, it can be used both offensively and defensively. It must be very hard to master. More important is what the Abbey plans to do with it. Not that I really care. Um, Laffy said? May I ask you something? What is it? The girl with the umbrella from Lord Melchior's illusion. What is her connection to Aizen? I don't think he'd answer if I asked him myself. I don't know. I was wondering about her as well. She was pretty, wasn't she? Oh, so you like a girl who's cute, but with a bit of sophistication. Really? Well, I thought his type was more like Vel- Ah! Uh, shh! What's going on? We were discussing a delicate topic. Muffy sets first crush, if you must know. Oh. No, we weren't. We were just talking about the Umbrella Girl from the Illusion. The Umbrella Girl. That illusion made Aizen hesitate. She must be really important to him. Indeed. It must be a deep, naughty relationship. Come on now. Like a wife he wants to leave, but he can never let go. Or a lover from whom he can't move on. No, that's too wild. And she's too young. Yeah, it's not that. What's more likely for a self-serving pirate is a daughter from a woman who only knows him by a fake name. Perhaps one whom he cast aside, or who cast him aside. And maybe she was somebody he couldn't marry for some reason. But when she died, he raised her daughter for her. He had been friends with her since they were children. But they only realized their true feelings after they had been married to someone else. Is this their idea of romance? In any case, beware of girls, Luffy said. Right. When imaginations run uncontrolled all over the place. All right, now we're just gonna make our way back. And back we shall cats. Oh, that's two. That saddens me.
All right. Now that's done. Definitely gonna skip all that. Now what are we gonna do? What's wrong? This dog came up with a book in its mouth. Here, take a look. Huh. It looks pretty old. I've never seen this kind of writing before. It's not ancient Avarost, that's for sure. Part of it looks like a chronology, so maybe it's a history book? If I were to guess, I'd say they're Meliodasian characters, which would peg it at about 2,000 years old. It's more recent than Avarost, but the writing has fallen completely out of use. All kinds of notes are written throughout the book, too. Someone must have been studying it. If it's research material, that might make it Videl's book. Videl? Who's that? He's a weird kid who's way into studying history. He lives at the inn. Could you maybe deliver the book to him for us? We were told not to get too close to him, so... Yeah, sure. I guess. Alright. So, we're gonna get paid even more. And then we're gonna save. And then we're gonna keep walking around. My book! My book! Where could I have left it? Are you Videl? Is this yours? My book! Oh, that book is super important to me! Thank you! Uh... I'm Lafayette. I hope you don't mind that we flipped through some of it. Can you actually read Meliodasian script? You recognize Meliodasian writing? That's unusual in this day and age. Oh, it's not that big of a deal, really. When I grow up, I want to be an adventurer who travels the world and explores lots of ruins. So to make sure I'm ready for anything, I've been studying ancient history, starting with the Era of Darkness. The Era of Darkness? You're referring to the Dark Period, right? Right. Almost no written records from the age have survived. But if you compare the history before and after, you can tell something major must have happened. Wow, that's fascinating. I know! Look at those two, all worked up over an old book. My little brother was just like that too. Luffy and our brother used to. We received reports of suspicious persons in the area. Have you seen anything? Not good. They're onto us. Quickly, hide in my house. Hide in my house, which is the inn. Videl, have you seen anyone suspicious recently? Sorry, sir. I've been absorbed in my book. That's all right. Thanks. Look, I know it must be tough living alone with your mom. Just remember, your father's a praetor. He's out there fighting to protect us all. Keep your chin up for his sake at least, all right? Uh-huh. Thanks for your help, Videl. Videl, your father is an exorcist? Yeah, he is. But don't worry, I won't say anything about you and your friends. I'm your friend too! Really? And to prove it, I'll let everyone in on a big secret. This book tells you how to make an Omega Elixir, an incredibly ancient and powerful medicine. If I'm reading it right, you need five ingredients in order to create the elixir. I've only translated one of them so far, but I'll tell you what it is. That's really nice of you, Videl. But I don't have any way to repay you for this. Oh, please, think nothing of it. I'd just like it if you came and talked with me again sometime. Of course. What are friends for? The Omega Elixir. That's an ancient medicine said to be able to cure any disease. 
But it was my understanding that no samples or recipes survived the Era of Darkness. Meliodasian script was used prior to the Era of Darkness, so I guess it's possible that Videl's recipe might be legit. He's just a kid. I don't know how much we can trust his translation. You saw his notes. I doubt many adults could even get anything out of that book. He might be onto something. Kids are more capable than we give them credit for, especially where their interests lie. I think we can trust Videl. Laffy used to read books intently like that, too. Furthermore, couldn't a hypothetical Omega Elixir be quite useful to you, Velvet? Laffy said, you look like you really want to track down those ingredients. Yeah, I do. Personally, I don't really care. But if you want to look for them, I won't stop you. Okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, now we just got to... is that at all right we're gonna save again and then we're gonna proceed to go back to the port um use us pardon us strange persons coming on through Garlic. This big storm came and swept me out to a class four island. And let me tell you, it's as bad as the rumors make it sound. I wanted to just wait it out in a shipyard somewhere, but then the water turned all gooey. Then I had these jellyfish things coming onto the deck, and before I knew it, slugs were swimming around in the damn ocean. Wouldn't the salt in seawater mess up a slug? Yeah, that's what I thought too, but these weren't no sea slugs neither. It was scary. I'll tell you that much. You want my advice? Stay the hell away from that island altogether. But if you do go, watch out for that gooey stuff. What did that pirate mean by class four? I've never heard of that. It's a classification the Abbey uses to help inform their strategy, an estimation of how well they've been able to manage the demon outbreak in an area. Administrative zone classes one through three have been assigned a suitable contingent of exorcists to guarantee the population's safety. So, Class 4 administrative zones are ones that are still unsafe? In a perfect world, the entire kingdom would be protected, but there's just not enough manpower to go around. The Abbey doesn't send exorcists to remote areas in far-off islands. Instead, they avoid casualties by making those areas off-limits. But that pirate mentioned he'd come close to an island. Are those policies actually enforced? They send out an official notice to stay away, and that's all. It's not like they could blockade every tiny remote island out there. So you're free to dive into the deep end if you want, but no one will come to your rescue. Hope you know how to swim. If they could keep the demons in check, they wouldn't have to tell people to stay clear. Frankly, I think the Abbey just doesn't want to go near places like that. In other words, these are dangerous places that the Abbey has washed their hands of. Makes you wonder how much they can administrate these places when they're not willing to get their hands dirty. Are there many Class 4 administrative zones? I've heard of 10 such regions in my time working as an inspector for the Abbey, but I'm afraid I couldn't tell you their exact locations or their current status. If the Abbey abandoned this island, it's probably safe to assume that it's getting to be pretty dangerous. If we go there, we're gonna want to be prepared. Ooh. Demons! There's more of them! A whole band of them rampaging through Rorg Forest! There was already one dangerous demon in those woods, and now we have more! And they're still on the loose! A lot of exorcists have come to deal with them, but... What do these demons look like? That's what I want to know. Those Abbey people won't tell us nothing. Every time a demon comes around, it's all, show us your cargo this, and don't leave port for a while that. How are we supposed to catch any fish? 
These demons really are a pain in the neck. If I was an exorcist, I'd lay down some justice, I tell ya. At the end of the day, it's not the demons or the exorcists that have it rough. It's us normal folk. Anyway, you guys should be careful. There are demons about. Thanks for the warning. First mate! You're all right! Sorry to worry you. And the captain? It turned out to be a fake. But now I know the real one's still alive somewhere. Well, of course he is. Not that he has a lot of time left. What do you mean? Calm down. I'll explain later. Aizen! You stay calm too, okay? <laughs> and you've all taken your salatoma? Yes, sir. And nobody died? All still kicking. Compared to your curse, sir, the sickness was tiny potatoes. All right. Then let's get ready to sail out. Already done, sir. We're ready whenever. <laughs> <sighs> the Pirate's Creed, huh? There's worse out there. Okay, that's kind of cool. Interesting. Um, where did my thing? Okay. wasn't the real I freed but I'm glad everyone on the ship is feeling better yeah though it sounds like they never want to touch that Salatoma stuff ever again <laughs> what about Eleanor she took it too and her face went all Wah! I don't mean how she looked I mean how she actually feels oh well she looks like she feels better too good you're worried about her, aren't you, Velvet? No, it's nothing like that. Let me tell you something, kiddo. When young maidens ripen, they have trouble expressing their feelings. So Velvet's... ripen? Mogilu, quit giving Loppy set confusing thoughts. <laughs> no trouble expressing those feelings, I see. is supposed to exist to bring peace and order to the world. Everything the Abbey does, everything Lord Melchior and Shepherd Artorius do, it ought to be rooted in that mission. And yet, something just doesn't feel right here. You are dismissed. That knowledge is not for you. Uh, uh... Something wrong? Whoa! Easy there. Just asking. S sorry I was just deep in thought. Is there something you need from me? Nah. Just heard a bunch of sighs and wondered if you were feeling sick or anything. No, I drank my Solitoma juice. Ah. Tasted like crap, didn't it? It... it wasn't that bad. Hey. What? 
Are you afraid of demons? No, I, I am not. It's more like I despise them. Ten years ago, a group of them attacked my village. They destroyed everything. And everyone. Including your family? Yes. The only family I had at that point was my mother. And in all the chaos, she... <sighs> all I have left of her is this hand mirror she gave me. I didn't want anyone else to have to feel the way I did. And so, I became an exorcist in order to destroy demons. So you can keep your pity. Gotcha. I will then. We're going on a ship to this dock. Oh, I could have skipped that whole thing. called a pangyon, a type of bird native to this area. Pangyon. Their meat is succulent and tender, and makes a lovely stew. Wow, what's it taste like? You'd eat that poor thing? Savage. You're one to talk, demon. It was one of my mother's specialties. All right, enough of the chit-chat. Magilu, what's this grimoire friend of yours like? Hmm, well, how do I put it? <sighs> oh. You know, like that. That doesn't say shit. Like what? Oh. Well, to put it in a way those of meager imagination can understand... Grim's got a sort of listless, aristocratic air about her. A noblewoman in her twilight, you could say. Huh. So you mean, like, a woman, but different from Velvet and Eleanor. <laughs> You're not wrong there. I tell you what, just keep an eye out for a grown woman. Uh, grown woman. Okay, I got it. Well, since we got her name, we could start by asking around. Exactly. Now you're talking. <sighs> What's up, kiddo? Magi Lu, you're a grown woman yourself. So why is it you have trouble clearly expressing your real feelings? <laughs> Good question. Put simply, a long time ago, mine broke. Bagow! Chaploom! Bye bye! Your feelings broke? Come on. Let's question the townsfolk. Sounds like she's got her heart broken. And that's about it. What is this? A jump? Or do I climb back up? No. Oh, this is a bar. Yay. Silky paper. 
So, is that like toilet paper? In a way? Or is that just not how things are here? Just gonna see. Damn. This recipe looks real tasty. Ooh. Scout ship set. So, how do you like our island? Nice and laid back, right? It's quite a bit different from Logris. This place was even more relaxed before the opening. But recently, a lot of our young folk have gone starry eyed about the city and left us in the lurch. It's still better than it was when the demons first started showing up. We have the Abbey to thank for that. And because people are traveling more now, the need for ships has skyrocketed. Our lumber industry is booming. In other words, when the money started flowing, people let it go to their heads? That and those exorcists and soldiers from the bigger cities, they really seemed sophisticated. People from the other islands wear different clothes and have things we don't, you know? Getting worked up and worked over by what's trendy. Is that foolishness not the very definition of youth? If this keeps up, our island's traditions will fade away. That's what worries me. I understand how you feel, but you have to give young people the freedom to be themselves. Yes. Anything more for me? No, just a fighter. And a bat. All right, and we're out of here. I don't think they really gave any information either. That just was ramblings of old people. Cats. Damn it. It's become common practice to use Southgan lumber for shipbuilding, but there's a reason. Our trees really are the best for it. Natan trees only grow in Southgan. Their wood is light, tough, and doesn't rot. Perfect for shipbuilding. You know your stuff. Long ago, before people knew how to build seafaring vessels, Midgan and Southgan were separate countries. Then our ancestors fashioned rafts out of Natan logs and floated all the way to Midgan. A Midgan craftsman amazed to see a humble raft cross the open sea return with our ancestors here to Southgand. He had used the natant logs to build a large, sturdy ship. Thanks to him, commerce took off between Midgand and Southgand, and the age of exploration began. The excitement of a new age had everyone floating on air, but within mere decades, Midgand declared war on Southgand. Ironically enough, it was ships made from trees from their islands that enemies used to invade them. The fighting continued for a long time, but in the end, Midgand emerged the victor. Our islands were occupied. As hard as things were, our ancestors still liked to joke about it. They'd say, age of exploration, more like age of exploitation. <laughs> when things were that bad, they could still joke about it? South Ganders have always been a cheerful bunch. We tend to look for the silver lining in every cloud. It may not seem like it these days, but... South Gand used to be a place where the laughter would never cease. Some people even used to call it Shenanigand. Shenanigand? This must have been a really fun place. Nanigan. Hmm. How very... Check. Outside fragment. Ooh. Give me a soul. Uh... Where do I go? 
Well, that answered my question. I just gotta figure out how I'm gonna get over there. Oh, hello! Hello, Pathway. I am coming over you. Pepper. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Still no leads on that grimoire lady. Mogulo, when did you get that letter from her you mentioned? say it must have been last year a decade ago take this seriously or i'll feed you to the sharks oh what i think i'd at least rate a kraken keep this up and i swear i'll eat it's them the final preparations are complete once you've assumed your new post everyone will act on your command thank you sister but to be honest, I worry that these shoes I'm filling might just be a bit too big for me. You need not worry. You possess a special strength and quality that others lack. Shepherd Artorius has high hopes for your deployment to Polymedes. Fear not. Just be yourself and you'll do fine. Believe you're a leader, and you will be. Yes. I'll try to make you proud, sister. They're sending him to Palamedes? Is that the name of the facility on this island? I had better get going. Safe travels. Oh, one more thing. Be careful around the demon and Haria. It's stronger than it looks. We've even had some casualties. Understood. Also, if you must drink the water, remember to boil it. Sister... <laughs> I know, I know, I worry too much. But I just can't help myself. So, there's a demon in Haria. It sounds like it's a pretty feisty one, too. If so, it may prove useful. Still, what magical timing for Oscar to show up here at the very same hour we do! <sighs> I understand your suspicion of me, but have you any proof? None, it's true. But as an exorcist, you're certainly sympathetic to the Abbey's cause. And soon, you may wish we were sympathetic. Eleanor hasn't been snitching on us. I'm sure of it. And how would you know? Are you watching her even when she's taking a bath? Huh? <laughs> no, I don't. I... I always stay outside when she's taking a bath. And... Then isn't it possible she's communicating with the Abbey in secret while you're not there? You pledged to obey me until the day you die, correct? Yes, that I did. Remember, when you two trade blows, only the Abbey wins. One less demon, and one less traitor for them to worry about. While we're standing around here arguing, that demon could be attacking Grimoire! <sighs> it's true. Let's find some more people to question around town.
So what's it really like? Huh? The connection between Moloch and Vessel. Do you share, like, thoughts and feelings? Um, sort of. When I'm dwelling inside Eleanor, I can see what she sees and hear what she hears. But I can't read her thoughts or her emotions. Sitting in a box doesn't teach you how the box feels. I see. In that case, I want to give her as little time alone as possible. Uh, I don't want to bathe with her, all right? I know. You're a boy and all. For her baths, we can send Bienfu. No, that's a bad idea. It'll have to be Mogulu. Or myself. Phew! What sort of boundaries have you and Eleanor drawn? How do you sleep? We talk before bed sometimes. But it's not like I'm sleeping by her side or anything. It's easier for me to tell when she wakes up if I'm dwelling inside her. Does she ever get out of bed at night? Not in my experience. And she sleeps so peacefully. Huh? When she's around you guys, she always looks so stern. But when she's sleeping, her expression is... softer, you could say. She lets her hair down, too. And I think it's kind of prettier that way. Huh. So that's what he likes. Well, keep an eye on her, but... But? Watch out for the older girls. Huh? Teresa and Oscar sure seem close. I've known them since I was an initiate, but I've never seen them quarrel, not even once. Did you ever fight with your brother, Velvet? Yeah, I guess I did. Sometimes I'd chew him out, and he'd sulk and stop talking to me, but I found that adorable too. You did? No matter how much he dug in his heels, or tried to talk like he was in charge, after a while he'd be right there trailing along behind me. Like a little puppy dog. Puppies are a lot more obedient. I always had to keep an eye on him. Little brothers are odd creatures. Rokuro's a little brother. Is he adorable too? <laughs> I don't think a little brother who's out to kill you is in any way adorable. But Shigure seemed like he was having fun. Sometimes you just don't make sense. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> little brothers. Do you have any siblings? I'm an only child. Well then, that's perfect. You pretend the boy is your little brother. Huh? That's a bit extreme. But actually, when I'm talking with Lafayette, sometimes I think, this is what having a brother must feel like. I could be Eleanor's brother. Don't take any of this nonsense seriously, Lafayette. Malakim are just tools to exorcists. She can never think of you as her brother. Oh, yeah. You're wrong. I've changed how I view Malakim. I know that's true because I can think of him as a brother. Right. She's all talk. Don't believe her. It seems to me like you're the one who's treating him as a tool by forcing your own opinions upon him. Ooh, two sisters struggling for the affections of their brother. Eeny teeny candlestick. Which one will the Muppet pick? How about an older brother instead? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, where the hell do I go now? So I can need to go over here. There's one beneath. The people of South Gand originally worshipped Amenuch, the Empyrean of Water. The lives of the people of the Southern Isles are inherently tied to the sea. Whether it was gratitude for a good catch or an appeal for protection, everyone offered their prayers to Amenoch. But the Abbey worships Enominot, don't they? Do the people still keep their faith? Most of the people obey the will of the Abbey. But one small village deep in South Gand is a special case. The village is called Haria, and even now they keep their faith in Amenoch. They've even quarreled with the Abbey. I'm grateful that they fight off the demons. I really am. But do they have to dictate which gods we worship to? They think they do. 
It's their truth. Then again, they can't control what's in your heart, can they? All right, that's done. Let me. There's still no information on this this grimoire. Hello, good sir. What does it mean to become an adult? <laughs> the eternal question of youth. Have you ever heard of the ceremony of adulthood? It's a yearly tradition on this island. If I remember right, it's totally wild. Everyone throws bananas and oranges at each other. Traditionally, yes, but things have changed over the years. Bananas and oranges are a thing of the past. People are always reaching for bigger and better things, right? In this case, it's watermelons. Whole watermelons. You're throwing watermelons? That's gotta hurt. Trust me, I know. But watermelons are the least of our worries. Recently, people have started flinging coconuts. Coconuts? Those things are as hard as rocks! Trust me, I know. Like getting hit with a brick. Now, every year, there are some kids who never make it to adulthood. You don't mean they... Yeah, I've kept putting it off myself, but it looks like this year, I've got no choice but to participate. That's crazy. It's far too dangerous. And more importantly, how does it make someone an adult? There are ancient traditions that say overcoming danger marks a child's coming of age. Some people still cling to the old ways. You've hit the nail on the head. There are lots of old folks that sit around complaining how weak as darn kids are. The hypocrites. Back then, they used bananas and watermelons. They even cracked the watermelons ahead of time. I don't think cracking a coconut would help much either. So that's why you're standing about looking blue. I'm so ashamed of myself for being scared. If you don't want to do the ceremony, why not just skip it? I'd love to, but I don't really have a choice. I wouldn't be able to show my face around here if I chickened out. Having the courage to say no to something you don't feel is right. Isn't that the true mark of an adult? Wait! You're right! <laughs> now I can finally become an adult! Oh yeah! Look how grown up I am! <laughs> and getting carried away with yourself and acting the fool is the true mark of immaturity. Sorry. You're right. Okay, so... Nothing. Still. What if I come up here, go to the star, and then proceed to follow suit? Hey, this doll? It looks like Bienfu. Ah, a keen eye you have, young man. That is a doll of the Empyrean Amenoch. That's... Empyrean Amenoch? Yep, no doubt about it. I've seen her with my own eyes. Real dignified, but not without a bit of a temper. You saw her? Why was she angry? Well, the Abbeys banned any profession of the Amenochian faith in Southgand, despite her popularity. Gotta assume that's what got her all bent out of shape. I tried talking to her, but no matter what I said, she was just like... <sighs> oh. Wait, that sounds like... And that low-energy goddess you saw? The doll you've got here looks like her? Yeah, more or less. Ha! Fortune smiles upon thee, weary adventurers. That listless goddess is none other than Grim. Grimoire isn't human? When did I ever say she was? So, shopkeep, where'd you see her? I think it was down by McClear Beach. Pensively watching the tide come in? That's her, all right. Quickly, to the beach! Ugh. Why didn't you mention Grimoire as a mall? Anything new? Alright, nothing to sell. Awesome. Where to next? Okay. Go down here. Beautiful. 
powerful water. So this is Muckler Beach. I hope she's actually here. That just sounds disgusting. This grimoire who we're searching for is a Moloch like Bienfu, right? To be honest, I don't see how someone so different can be a Moloch just the same as Lafayette or Aizen. I understand your doubts. It's quite the tangly mess. I'll tell you anything! In that case, I've been wondering, what's underneath your hat? Oh no! Anything but that! So, we've hit a wall already. But that ribbon flaps around and gets in the way, right? Can I take it off for you? No! No! That's not possible! You mustn't remove the ribbon! Why not? That's another thing I can't say! It's all cans with you. All right, is there anything you can tell me? I could talk about what type of Malakim we are, or our position in the world of Malakim, or our abilities. Oh, I'd like to know all that. Then I will tell you! Listen closely. We Norman are a well-established race of Malakim. Compared to other Malakim, we aren't as adept at manipulating natural forces, but we excel at drawing out and heightening the abilities of others. Think of them as a convenient power-up. They're also known as common spirits. Don't even say that! We Norman hate being called that. Why is it so painful for you? Because it makes people think we're average and unremarkable. That's why we work so hard to show how we're all different. That does explain your quirky speaking mannerisms. Don't sweat it. That's a perfectly common thing to worry about. <laughs> Don't say that! Oh, gods. Okay. What the hell is... Oh! No, you stay the fuck away from me. What are those penguins doing? Probably keeping their eggs warm? Most likely. They look like a mama and a papa. Penguins are monogamous, faithful creatures. They never leave their mate. <sighs> Isn't that romantic? So they lay eggs because they're like husband and wife. But. How do they make the eggs? Oh no. Huh? That's well. Oh no. So Luffy said, here's an interesting fact. A single penguin egg actually contains dozens of smaller orange eggs. Oh, so their eggs must be small and crunchy. Yep. They have the texture of caviar and the rich flavor of sea urchins. Interesting. So they're more like fish than birds. So you've eaten them. How cruel. Look how much they care about their young. While it may be a bit cruel, they taste amazing. They're considered a delicacy in some circles. Top a bowl of rice with these crunchy eggs and some rich pinyon thigh meat, and you get a dish called Family Fricassee. That's a horrific name. I wasn't the one who named it, okay? Those eggs look tasty, but I think I'll pass. <laughs> the birds and the bees. No, you stay the ever-living fuck away from me. Still gotta find this damn thing. Is this the... Uh... A dragon? No, just a big lizard demon. Is he friends with Dial? Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh boy, here we go. Ow, ow, ow. Well, if I just wasn't fucking stupid, this would be easy. You're useful, get up. Stop it. Here, it turned red. Oh, you shy. More like it's angry. Let's not enrage it any further. It's building up strength. Be careful. No, I can't. Well, okay. So he's gonna continuously hit harder. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a lot of damage. All right, we're gonna... No, no, no. Is he backing up? Don't worry, dude. I'm just getting my ass kicked, too. So, you caught me in a corner. Just straight up kick her ass. Me first. What? Ah! <laughs> 
Just beat him down! Beat him more! I refuse to fall here! Well, some of us refuse. Someone else did not. Not gonna say any names, but that's what happened. Same sort of Moloch as Bianfu? Your grimoire, right? <sighs> We've been looking for you. We need your help. <sighs> Who are you? I'm Velvet. I know your witch friend. Oh. Grim, so wonderful to see you. It's been forever! Ah, you too. Still as outlandish a pair as ever, I see. How exactly do you know her? Which training? She was an upperclassman. And? We found this fascinating ancient tome, and we were hoping you could read it for us. Goodness, Mogilu. You of all people joining a team? I didn't know you had it in you. Eh, that keep me entertained. Well, I don't need entertainment. Bien! Come on, Grim! Isn't there any way you can help us? It's not the kind of thing I do. Oh, what a shame. Things happen. Well, we tried, didn't we? Maybe you need some... incentivizing. Do it. I'm serious. I bet you are. <sighs> Your eyes tell me you're dangerous. Trouble follows you like a hawk tails a rabbit. And at my age, trouble is something I'd rather avoid. How old are you? Ask me again and you'll get a firework in the tush. Uh, my apologies. It appears we've wasted our time. A walk on the beach is never wasted, but sorry. <laughs> well, how did you learn to read the ancient tongue? Are there books for studying it or something? My, my. Are you actually thinking of learning it on your own? Well, I love reading, and I want to learn more about history. Besides, we need what's in this book. You have passion, child. I'll give you that. Not to mention you want to be helpful to Velvet, don't you, kid? Yeah... My tuition isn't cheap, you know. You will teach me? No, I won't. But I admire your dedication enough to read it for you. Now where's this book? Here it is, ma'am! You needn't be so formal. Oh, uh, y yes, ma'am. Er, uh, not ma'am. Right. Let's see what we're looking at here. Now, was it I gotta pay in order to get this service? The language of ancient Avarost. <laughs> Had to be the hard one, of course. A lot of wear and tear, too. This'll take some time. We're in a hurry. That may well be, but this isn't the place for study. Let's move to someplace more comfortable. Mm, you've redeemed yourself, young man. There's a village called Haria just a little ways away. That works. Thank you. Fine. Haria Village. Whatever gets the job done. I apologize if I'm being rude, but I have to ask. You're not Amanoch the Empyrean, are you? Of course I'm not. What would even make you ask such a thing? A shop in Isolt was selling Amanoch figurines that looked just like you. Oh, that. 
I distinctly remember whispering to the shopkeeper in his sleep, telling him not to sell those things. You showing up in his dreams probably only convinced him you were the real deal. You should sue for his use of your likeness and get proper compensation from that shopkeeper. Forget it. It's no concern. Yeah, you're right. It's not like they'd ever sell anyway. Oh, you think a figurine of mine wouldn't sell? You got this whole somber ennui thing going on. A figurine needs to be cute, like me. Then how about I turn you into a product? Me? Really? Oh, yes. I'll have you stuffed and mounted. But since it'd be a unique piece, I'd have to price it a bit higher. M mounted? No, no, count me out! Oh, you're no fun. Now, what was it we were talking about? Whether or not you are the Empyrean Ominoch. Ah, yes, that's right. I'm no Empyrean. I'm just a simple girl. <sighs> it would be hard for anyone to worship an Empyrean like me, right? That's true. <clears throat> oh, uh, I mean, it just seems like you're the type who can see through anything, so... Perhaps an Empyrean seems less intimidating from a certain point of view. You're saying I'm scarier than an Empyrean? Not scarier, exactly. Just more of a savvy sort of woman. That's not a bad answer, but it won't get you out of the doghouse. Haria, isn't that the village with that demon that Oscar and Teresa were talking about? I think it might be. We should remain on our guard. All right. All right. Well, I like how that guy just came out That's of nowhere. To the inn, one and all. You're getting really close. And this is where I'm going to cut it, folks. Hope y'all enjoying the series. I am as well. Glad we found Grim. But now, what will that beak beak? What will that book hold? Will we find out next episode, or we're we going to have to go on a quest to find the answers we seek? Will we have to fight this boss or this demon next episode as well? Who knows? We're just going to have to find out together, aren't we? Till next time, folks. To Deloo.